My name is Luis Ortiz. This is my partner, Daniela. Uh, in this first part of the video, we will be assessing hip abduction active range of motion. So usually uh, we use this to detect any pain uh, or location of pain in, in the hip joint. Um, the normal values for this are 30 degrees to 50 degrees and the movement occurs in the frontal plane. So what we're going to want to look for when we assess active range of motion is any compensation in the lumbar spine or pelvis, which um, just shows that there is something going wrong with the patient's hip joint. So what we're going to want to do first is uh, start with the unaffected leg. And so in order to assess goniometry, what we're going to do is have the patient laying supine. And uh, do you mind moving a bit further down? Uh, like a bit more where you get, get to the edge of the table. Okay, so the patient, their leg off the table, and this is performing a deduction. All right, can you hold your leg straight oh, yes. and, and do the same thing? So right there is a deduction. Can you put it back and do it one more time? All right, now in order to perform a deduction, a deduction, we're gonna locate the ASIS. The ASIS is right here use our hypothenar eminence to find it, and it's the bony landmark right here. Do you mind putting your finger right here? So we're gonna have the patient hold the place. We're gonna put the fulcrum right over the ASIS. We're gonna have the stationary arm contralateral to the other ASIS. And then what we're gonna do is have the patient perform the abduction. Go ahead and perform abduction. Here's the measured angle. We have a reading of 40 degrees. So this is within normal. Now we have to perform the test bilaterally just to make sure that both hip ranges uh, are normal. So we're gonna do the same thing. Place the fulcrum over the ASIS, which is right here. Then place the stationary arm contralateral to the other, to the other ASIS. Now, can you please abduct? All right and we have normal range of motion. Second part of this video, I will be assessing the patient's knee patellofemoral medial glide passive range of motion. So this test for any superior inferior patella tendon is issues, uh, the muscles that we'll be assessing in this are the lateral renentaculum, the vastus lateralis, and the iliotibial band. So in order to begin, uh, I will have my patient laying supine. And do you mind moving up, Daniela? Mm -hmm. All right. So right here, we'll start with the unaffected leg first. So what we're gonna wanna do is have our thumb over, our index finger over the lateral border of the patella and translate. So here we have the patella right here. We're able to move it laterally and medially. This patient, uh, hers doesn't move all that much, but I, it is definitely visible. So from here, what we're gonna wanna do is assess joint play and uh, the end feel, which should be firm, and any pain that the patient might be feeling. So next, we're gonna want to move the patella medially. And uh, do you feel any pain? No. All right, any excessive motion may indicate structural damage, which you would want to get the patient checked out for. Now we'd wanna test it bilaterally which is right here. So I'm gonna move it laterally first, then medially. And do you feel any pain? All right, we're done with the third part of this video project. I will be performing the Thomas test on our patient here. So the Thomas test tests for any iliopsoas tightness. Uh, the sensitivity for this test is 89% and the specificity for this test is 92%. So it's great at ruling in any uh, possible iliopsoas tightness. So in this test, the quad, the patient's quad and femur will be uh, extended and shortened. So in order to perform this test, we're gonna start with the patient laying supine. And what we're gonna wanna do is, let's start with the unaffected leg. So we're gonna bring it into full knee and hip extension. All right. So as you can see, can you please keep your legs straight? All right. So any possible, any positive symptoms uh, will reproduce pain and it will also um, 
bring up the effect, like the affected, the unaffected leg. Oh, fuck, hold on. I will not be performing the Thomas test. So in order to begin, what we're gonna wanna do is bring the patient's, we're gonna start with the unaffected leg first. So we're gonna bring the patient's unaffected leg into full hip and knee extension. And any positive symptoms will be the will be shown by the affected leg coming up with the unaffected. So let's say that the patient does have iliopsoas tightness, it'll come up a bit like this. All right, now we're gonna perform the test bilaterally. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other leg. And again, any positive symptoms will uh, reproduce pain and it will also bring up the other. The fourth part of this video, I will be assessing a grade three manual muscle testing for the patient's knee extension. So this manual muscle test assess the four quadriceps muscle. Uh, in order to perform the manual muscle test, we're first gonna begin with the unaffected leg. So in this case, the patient's left leg, we're gonna wanna first stabilize the quad muscles with one hand and ask the patient to fully extend their knee. So can you please do that? All right. And when we are grading their manual, when our, we are grading their knee extension, we're gonna wanna look for zero resistance and controlled movement. So any instability will uh, reproduce the opposite with a lot of resistance and uncontrolled movements. Now, we are gonna to wanna to perform this bilaterally. So for the other leg, stabilize the quad muscles, fully extend the knee, please. All right. And she has zero resistance and very well controlled movements. Uh, did you feel any pain during the exam? Okay. No. So uh, that is grade three manual muscle testing. Video project. I will be performing the flexion, AV duction, axial compression test. So this test is positive in any labral tears and is good at assessing any intra-articular pathologies. Uh, currently, there is no record of any sensitivity specificity, um, so it might have a weak clinical value. So in order to begin our, this test, we're gonna have the patient laying supine and we're gonna begin in the unaffected leg. So we're gonna have the patient fully uh, flex their hip to 90 degrees. All right then we are going to adduct as far as possible. So right here. All right, now what we're gonna wanna do, can you move more this way please? Now what we're gonna wanna do is uh, push straight down and provide axial compression. So this compression is gonna go from the femur to the hip and we want to try and stretch that posterior side. So again, any positive sign will be uh, any reproduction of pain in uh, the labor. So now we're gonna perform this in the affected leg. So again, flex the hip to 90 degrees and we're gonna provide an axial compression from through the femur to the hip. In the sixth part of the video project, I will be performing the valgus stress test on the patient for the knee. So this test uh, for any medial collateral ligament injury in the knee joint, the sensitivity is reported to be between 78 and 91% and a specificity between 49 and 67%, which gives it a moderate clinical value of ruling out any possible injuries. So first what we're gonna wanna do is the unaffected leg. So we'll have our hand uh, on the medial aspect of the leg and our other hand on the right, on the lateral aspect of their knee. So we're gonna wanna apply a valgus force with their leg extended first. Okay. Then what we're looking for is any excessive gaping as well as pain. So make sure that the patient's, uh, you can see the patient's knee again perform, no excessive gapping. Uh, do you feel any pain? No. All right, then we're gonna wanna put the knee in 30 degrees flexion and do the same thing. I did not observe any gaping. Is there any pain? No. Okay, now I will be performing the valgus stress test bilaterally. So again, we're gonna have our one hand on the lateral, on the medial aspect of their ankle and our other hand on the meat on the medial, on the lateral aspect of their knee and apply valgus force with their knee, with their leg extended. Do you feel any, any pain? No. no gaping either. 
then 30 degrees flexion, perform the test, no gaping at all, any pain? No. And that is the valgus stress of the video. I will be performing a palpation of the patient's sartorius. So this is uh, an anterior muscle, it's one of the most superficial. Uh, the origin is in the ASIS and the insertion is the uh, proximal end of the tibia right below the medial epicondyle uh, with the pes anserine. So in order to palpate this, what we're gonna wanna do is find the ASIS. So the ASIS is right here, go down diagonally, and in order to feel the sartorius, we're gonna place our hand on the medial ankle and then have the patient internally rotate and we will resist that. Go ahead and resist, and resist, all right. And right here, near the ASIS, we can feel the sartorius almost pop out. Now I will palpate the other sartorius. So again, start at the ASIS, move down diagonally, and then we're gonna want to resist internal rotation. And I feel the muscle right here. So the sartorius ends with the, uh, ends at the medial anterior tibia at the pes anserine muscle. And it also ends with the gracilis and the semitendon. In part eight of the video assignment, I'll be uh, palpating the patient's medial femoral condyle. So in order to first find, uh, find this, we're gonna have to find the joint line. Uh, flex their knee and uh, the other way. In order to find the joint line, can you do that one more time for me? Extend, flex, all right. Now that I've located the joint uh, line, I'm gonna move the fingers upwards towards the patella and I will find the medial, the medial femoral condyle on the medial side of the patient's leg, which will be uh, right next to the patella. Now we need to perform this bilaterally, so we're gonna do the same thing. Now that I found the joint line, uh, straighten out, I'm gonna move up one more time and then I'm gonna find the medial femoral condyle on the medial side of the leg. 